uh, back and forth, uh, went back to Bulgaria, then uh, spent another maybe four or five years in Canada, uh, the Lethbridge Research Center, this is AC, Canada, and then uh, took a faculty position at the University of Idaho, where I've been about maybe nine years, and uh, since 2008, I'm here in uh, Penn State. This actually began uh, back in Idaho. The United Dairymen of Idaho funded the project to look at uh, ways of reducing ammonia emissions from dairy manure. And if you know, Idaho actually was the first uh, to voluntarily uh, start uh, reporting ammonia and being concerned about ammonia emissions uh, from dairy farms. So that that's how this started. And we naturally found that the biggest uh, factor that affects ammonia emissions is uh, the crude protein in the diet. So how much protein you have in the diet is affecting the most ammonia emissions. So uh, we, we reported that uh, from that work about 40% reduction in ammonia emissions from 37% uh, from uh, just dropping the, the protein in the diet. When I came here to Penn State, we continued that work. And we, we, our intention was to see how low we can go actually with the protein. Commonly, there is feed uh, 17 to 18% good protein. Uh, we were trying to reduce it down to 15. And in a couple of projects uh, we had here, we reduced it to 14%. And that, again, had a dramatic effect on ammonia emissions. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to these low levels of uh, protein input and you have high-producing cows, you run into the problem of uh, certain essential amino acids starting limiting milk protein synthesis. So that led uh, naturally again to uh, trying to supplement low protein diets with uh, rumen protected amino acids and see how that will affect production. Uh, the objective being to maintain milk yield and uh, milk protein yield and, and concentration uh, at low protein feeding diets. So we had uh, Two projects conducted, actually three maybe uh, trials at this point, and we have one in the fall coming with about 120 cows. And we feed um, a control diet, which is actually also low in protein compared to commercial dairies. It's about 16%. And then we have a 14% crude protein diet. The total nitrogen losses are dramatically reduced. Uh, urinary nitrogen losses are reduced, uh, ammonia emissions, of course, are reduced. The overall efficiency of, uh, of the nitrogen increases very significantly, up to 38%, 37%, 38% uh, nitrogen efficiency. Now, in one trial, we found decreased milk yield with 14% uh, crude protein. And then in the next project, we decided that these diets are already limiting production and we need to supplement with amino acids. Uh, in that project, we uh, used uh, rumen-protected methionine and rumen-protected lysine. The results from this study are still being processed. What I can say here is that we maintain production so milk yield wasn't reduced, and these cows milked about uh, uh, close to 86, 87 pounds of milk. Uh, but there was a slight drop in uh, milk protein percentage. Okay. And this was a study with uh, 36 cows, so relatively large uh, production experiment. So neither uh, protein, uh, neither methionine or lysine uh, were able to maintain uh, milk protein uh, percentage at uh, this low protein feeding. 
but uh, milk production was the same as the control for the 16% uh, protein diet. And we also saw a very significant uh, drop in ammonia emissions and nitrogen losses. And the idea is uh, basically to uh, make the rumen work more efficiently and increase uh, microbial protein synthesis uh, to a maximum, uh, which uh, should provide any limiting amino acids in addition to lysine and methionine that may be missing in, in the whole protein diet. Well, the benefits uh, are a couple at least. Uh, one is that actually the diet will be cheaper. So feed cost per cow per day will, will decrease because usually you are taking the soybean meal out of the diet, which is uh, one of the most expensive feed ingredients. And the second benefit is uh, environmental uh, because these this kind of diets uh, have a lot less nitrogen coming out of the back end of the cow. So there will be a lot less nitrogen runoff and also a significant reduction in ammonia emissions. Now ammonia is, uh, EPA requires reporting ammonia and uh, hydrogen uh, sulfide emissions above certain level, 100 pounds a day, I think. Uh, so it, this, the, the regulation on this has started already. Uh, it's not uh, implemented very strictly, but uh, uh, dairy men should be expecting this to become uh, more and more stringent in the future. And I am looking at the moment of the table here that I can uh, cite to you, which uh, calculates um, nitrogen losses and feed cost savings yep. from two types of diets. So if you have a 17% crude protein diet, and if you have a 14% crude protein diet, the feed cost for 100 cow dairy uh, will be about $3,000 less uh, for the year. Annual, annual savings, about $3,000 for 100 cow dairy. The total nitrogen losses, though, for a two-year cycle, because you are assuming that it will take two years for the heifers to come into the herd, uh, will be minus about 11,000 pounds of nitrogen. And then the ammonia emission losses uh, will be reduced by about 10,000 pounds. This, uh, this is a very low protein diet, and that's why we assume milk loss. If you are decreasing protein from, 16, uh, from 18 to 16%, or from 17 to 16%, you should not see any milk loss or any difference in uh, milk protein. Again, I have to I have to make it clear here that if if there is anything else in the diet that that is is not up to the production of these cows, dropping protein is not going to help, but just will make things worse. For example, the the forage quality has to, has to be very good. And the energy uh, intake of these cows also have to be good. So it, we cannot have protein uh, being a substitute for energy in the diet. When the energy is met, the, the forage is a good quality and a highly digestible forage, then protein can be reduced and there will be no need for supplemental amino acids probably up to down to 16% crude protein. If we go below 16%, uh, then methionine, lysine, and probably some other amino acids will become limiting. And supplementing these uh, amino acids as rumen-protected amino acids uh, 